Well, good day, everyone. I'm Ted. This is the Black Pearl, and you're watching the Black Pearl Voyager channel. We're outside today. I've emptied out the uh, pearl here, and we're going to reload. So hang in there. I'll show you some things that we carry around with us. Yeah, I have to have the stool. <laughs> uh, ever since I lifted it and put the heavy-duty springs under it, it's gained a couple of inches, and now I need help to sit on the tailgate. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Well, greetings, all you YouTube followers of mine and anybody else that might be looking. Yeah, the uh, gladiator is empty. Uh, ever since we uh, got back from our trip, um, we had a little problem with dust. <laughs> now, as good as this soft topper is about keeping dust and water out, it does an excellent job on both counts. Uh, we encountered so much dust on the road that it creeps in through other ways, mostly, believe it or not, through this tailgate. Uh, yeah, if you close the tailgate and look down either side here, you will find that it's, you're looking at the ground. Uh, so anyway, what I did was I completely emptied it out and I completely hosed it out. And I mean, from top to bottom, right to left. Um, I hadn't cleaned it out since I actually uh, uh, installed this uh, slide. And so, over the years and over the trips, it slowly but surely starts gathering stuff. Um, and so, it's completely out. And I thought, well, now that I've got it out of there, I'll just do some modifications and uh, clean it up real good, clean up our gear completely, and uh, I'll show you what I did. So, it's all cleaned out now got rid of most of the dust and uh, I did do one mod while I had it out and um, that was to install this piece of HVPC or HVMW or anyway it's uh, cutting board material basically is what it is what we discovered while we were on our trip was that uh, uh, this surface here is hard to deal with because of the undulations. Sure, it has a couple of cup holders in it. We never used it for that. But we did need a flat surface. And um, so uh, I got to looking around. I found some of this material on uh, Amazon for about $44 for this sheet here. I had to cut it down, had to trim it. I uh, I um, rounded the corners here. I actually had to bevel this hedge because uh, once I got it all stuck on there with uh, 3M VHB tape, um, it, 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 I couldn't close the door. <laughs> couldn't close the tailgate. I didn't realize that there was such a narrow gap between this lip here and the tailgate here. And I thought this was where a lot of our uh, dust was coming through. In reality, a lot of our dust was coming through right down there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, yeah, you can see daylight all the way down. Uh, so it actually, it didn't fill the back. We didn't have, this wasn't, our stuff wasn't covered with the dust, but uh, it did get some dust in here. And that makes it hard to uh, want to handle it, um, especially when you have no source of running water because, uh, you know, you're out camping. And so your hands are always dirty, always dusty, always covered with dirt. So for about, I don't know, 60 bucks or so, 
Um, it's like I said, I used uh, VHB tape. This is not coming off. It will not pry off. I tried to in order to prevent or have to keep me from having to uh, trim this edge, shorten this edge up and bevel it. Uh, nope, it, it's not coming up. So uh, I just took an angle grinder and uh, trimmed and trimmed and trimmed until it fit properly. And now we have this nice surface for about 60 bucks total, which is what, about a third the cost of, uh, of what uh, some places are getting for that tailgate cover. So what I thought I'd do in this video was uh, go through our loadout. Now, this particular loadout here is uh, patterned after a friend of mine uh, who you may know, uh, Casey from Coyote Works. Uh, he's actually the one that kind of inspired this whole thing to go um, uh, overlanding rather than rock crawling. I wanted to make better use of the Gladiator than that, and uh, I really enjoyed his simplistic, and I don't mean that in a derogatory term, his very simple loadout that he could take off on a Friday evening, uh, go up in the hills and be completely comfortable uh, with food and shelter and water. And uh, without a lot of prep, without a lot of, uh, uh, without a lot of hassle, without a lot of loading, it is just the bare minimum with uh, the addition of a shower shelter that we installed recently. Uh, we've added the geyser uh, shower system to our loadout, uh, but that's about it. Uh, you're not going to find a whole lot of technology here. I don't have an antenna that pulls in cell signals. I don't have a Starlink system. Uh, I've got a simple tablet and a ham radio. And uh, if I need to uh, get help, I can get help. Uh, I've also got the Zolio uh, brand of uh, locator device that has an SOS feature. So the long and the short of it is, it's, it's just a, the very basic that you need to get by. Well, we did fine for over a week and uh, perfectly happy. And I don't have a lot of money invested in this. I bought the cheapest um, rooftop tent I could find and the lightest. A simple but effective rack, one that fits around the soft topper, uh, specially designed to fit around it. I carry some water and extra fuel on the sides of the rack, some traction boards, a shovel, uh, and uh, every once in a while I'll put our kayaks in here. We have the Tuck Tech roll-up kayaks, and uh, they fit in here even uh, quite nicely, even with a full loadout, and we took them with us uh, on our last trip. Never got a chance to use them, but those are the brakes. Anyway, I mentioned weight. One of the things I'm having trouble understanding is why in the world am I at nearly 7,000 pounds? Uh, that's uh, somewhat over the GVWR, let's just say. And so what I thought I'd do is uh, take an ordinary uh, bathroom scale, and uh, before I load this stuff up, I'm going to weigh each piece. I want to find out how much my loadout uh, weighs. So that's what we're going to do. So there it is, our complete loadout. It doesn't look like much and that's by design. It isn't much. As a matter of fact, it's just the bare necessities or what we consider necessities. And so uh, that's what fits in the back of the Gladiator and with room to spare. So. so while we were gone, we had a little trouble with our as uh, Os Randvik refrigerator that I bought a, a couple of years ago. When I went to uh, unplug it from the Jeep and put it on the Jackery for overnight, uh, when I got up in the morning, my Jackery was completely drained, completely empty. I, I've never seen it do that before. And so um, that got me to thinking <laughs> maybe something wrong. It kind of forced me to do a little upgrade here. And so what we did was uh, we found this. This is made by Bodega. It has several other names, uh, Bouge RV, 
uh, uh, New Air. Um, there's half a dozen different names. It's the same cooler. Maybe a different compressor. I don't know. But this is a dual zone. It's app controlled. It has, you can make either a freezer, either a refrigerator. The choice is yours. Um, and we kind of like that. Um, it comes with a lid that's reversible. It can actually be removed and placed on the other side so that you can orient it uh, the way you want. And the way I've got this oriented is so that this handle, which I really didn't want to remove, this actually retracts and uh, uh, makes it easy uh, to roll around on its nice rubberized wheels. Um, and uh, I think this will serve our purposes uh, uh, much better, much more flexible, it's a little larger, and uh, we can take ice cream, I guess. I doubt that we'll do that, but uh, you can buy ice cream if you need to. Turn it down and keep it frozen until uh, you get around the campfire. Anyway, um, 305 $305 uh, for this really nice dual zone, app controlled cooler. Alrighty, this is our Wildland folding table. This is another one of those items that Coyote Works in his original videos uh, used. Okay, so it's uh, 14 and a half pounds. Okay, we've got a little ladder for the tent. This is another 14 pounds. Ordinarily, you keep this up inside the tent, but we found that that really doesn't work for us. Uh, first of all, I don't like it sliding around up there. There's no way to secure it. But second of all, <laughs> it's, a, it's a long way up there without a ladder <laughs> to get this thing out. So you've got to stand on the tailgate or uh, whatever and put it in anyway. So we keep it outside of the uh, tent, and so that means I've got to find a place for it in the back, and I have. Okay, the front runner chairs, I carry two of these. As you can see, they're really compact and nice, uh, but they're heavy, which is fine if you don't mind dealing with the weight. And these are 18 pounds, so they're roughly nine pounds a piece, uh, in contrast with my other chairs, which are three pounds a piece. That would be these uh, Marchway uh, folding chairs. Uh, these are the typical lightweight aluminum frame, compact and very comfortable. That's what the difference is between these and the front runner chairs. They're not as comfortable as these. So we carry these, the Marchway chairs. It's the, uh, um, what's the other brand? Anyway, uh, they're a knockoff, but they're built almost identical. And um, yeah, so far they've held up really well. They'll support 300 pounds. Okay, next up is the ready light. This is probably one of the best pieces of kit we own. And this is another one of those things that Coyote Works uh, uses and still uses. And I agree with him. This is probably the best camp light you can get. And these are 15 pounds together. Uh, yeah, the uh, removable pod lights, the fact that it's solar chargeable and you can charge other things off of it. It has a USB port for that. Um, this just makes this one of the handiest gadgets uh, that you can take on a camping trip. And not a lot of room here and pretty lightweight. Here's about three gallons of water, two and a half gallons of water, and that's 20 pounds, of course. Okay, and this is our kitchen bag. This is uh, made by a company called uh, ATC. Adventure Tool Company out of Colorado. We bought these at um, the Expo in Flagstaff. Really nice. All of our kitchen utensils are in here. And it weighs 10 pounds. Now here's some heavy and important gear. This is my recovery gear and my tool kit. And we're looking at 45, 44 pounds. Okay, a couple of other items. This is my Ida Hill 100 watt panel and my Thunderbox uh, toilet out of Australia. Best toilet we've found so far and we're looking at 21 pounds between them. Anyway, I saved this one for last because it has to go into the Jeep right away. So let's see how much this puppy weighs. Oh God, I'm guessing 80 pounds. Okay, well, it's only 
60 pounds, which is heavy enough. Yep, 60 pounds. I thought it was heavier. But at my age, everything feels heavy. All right. That pretty much does it. Okay, there might be a few of you out there that are interested in what could be in this tote. And this is mostly items that we don't use a lot. Of course, toilet paper wouldn't be one of them, but this is where I keep our spare roll. What we have in here is some toilet paper. Uh, this looks like an extension here for uh, a couple of outlets in case you need, we need those. Um, these, <laughs> yeah, those are for the ladder. Um, the uh, release catches for the ladders uh, sometimes fall out and we'll lose them, and so you got to have some extras. Uh, we've got our, uh, this is a 10 inch chainsaw, electric chainsaw by Greenworks. Uh, we've already had to use that a number of times. I'm not sure why we're carrying around this uh, DVD player, except that we do have a projector also, and if we wanted to, we could actually uh, have movies out in the middle of nowhere. I may or may not put that back in it. Uh, here's some uh, butane gas for the little Cupid heater, which gets stored in here next to the chainsaw. Uh, we also carry extra canisters, one pound canisters here. That one's empty or nearly may need to be filled. Uh, here's the uh, Sawyer uh, water filter system uh, in case we need to filter some water. Thanks to my brother uh, Jeff for uh, some telescoping uh, forks for uh, roasting marshmallows. Uh, sometimes we like to play cribbage, but we haven't yet. This isn't even open. <laughs> uh, I also keep uh, my really nice camp knife in here. This is my gorilla knife. It has uh, uh, a fire strike on there. And uh, uh, it's just a really nice, good all-around camp knife. It's a good size. I also keep uh, Rex Betty uh, Silky Style Saw, but about a third the cost or a quarter of the cost anyway. This is great for trimming branches if uh, the uh, battery on your uh, chainsaw dies or if you leave it behind uh, when you go on a trip. Ask me how I know. And we've also got um, sandwich makers. Uh, we've got a camp axe here, a hatchet that I take with me. And this also has our... Um, pop-up fire pit, which you've seen in a few of my videos. Uh, really nice, uh, easy to use, easy setup, very light, very compact. The whole thing sets right in there. Uh, and you can have a fire anywhere, just about anywhere. So, oh, and Monica's hammock. Here are the rest of the items for the water purification system case we need it. Haven't used it yet. Haven't needed to, but it's there. And uh, I think I've got another item or two that needs to go in here before I close it up. One of those being our wool blanket. And that will go up in to the tent and stay up there uh, next time we open it up. I don't open it up uh, too often. We've got some highly recommended by Coyote Works Insect repellent, uh, this is good for ticks, but it also works against mosquitoes, so that's kind of nice. Anyway, that goes in there. So I just made that a little heavier, but not by much. Come on. This is not really a very good tote, but it's what I had at the time. Okay, first things first. The heaviest and least used box I have is that tote. So it goes up in the right hand corner. This has to go in a certain way so I can get to certain things first. And sometimes I won't pull it out at all, but I can flip the lid up. Okay. There we go. That's its spot. Next goes the table, and then the ladder, and then the three boxes standing three high. Let's have a look at what's inside of those. Okay, here we are. This is the dry goods box. You notice how those 
latches are a little hard to a little hard to unlatch. And here we've got an assortment of Mountain House meals, which we enjoy a lot. Uh, we've got some protein in a bowl. These are non-perishable. Um, these Idaho spreads, that makes a whole lot of hash browns. You just add water to that. Looks like there's some uh, vegetables in there. Uh, mashed potatoes. These are excellent mashed potatoes. Uh, looks like a little pasta in case we want to make up some spaghetti. There might even be some sauce in here. Or sometimes you can doctor up a mountain house meal, make it suitable for eating. <laughs> they are good. Not, not, nothing wrong with mountain house meals. They are really good. And then what do we got here? We've got some pulled pork. Anytime, anywhere it says. It's dried. I assume you add water. Remember what I said about sauce? So we've got sauces in here. We've got salt, pepper, uh, a little bit of coffee, some ketchup, mustard. Well, that's the kind of thing that goes in this box here. Oh, and syrup. Yeah, there's probably pancake uh, mix in here. I like my pancakes. And uh, so we always have a little bit of syrup. So that's what's in the dry foods box. And that goes in next. Okay, this is all of our cooking utensils. And everything we need to cook except for the grill. Let's see what we have in here, shall we? Okay, we've got a collapsible dish pan. Really nice. And this is another really nice item. This is an Omnia camp oven that uh, works really well to bake biscuits and cinnamon rolls and anything you can bake at home. Even a cake, I think. You can bake in this. There we go. Omnia camp oven. Really nice. Works very good. Or is it very well? Works very well. Uh, we've got our mosquito repellent thingy bob. I've got fire starting material here. Uh, skewers in case we want to make some uh, kebabs of some sort. Uh, this is more refills for this. A uh, can of butane fuel that we used um, for this. Uh, this here is a jet bowl knockoff. Works really good at about a third the cost. I think we paid maybe 60 bucks for this. Does the same thing. Boils water in under two minutes. And then we've got uh, an older style of uh, Coleman butane burner uh, that doesn't see much action since we got this and we had the griddle. But uh, Monica's got this all packed up nicely. Here's spare fuel and then one cast iron little skillet that we use on occasion but really don't need but it's nice to have. Well, hopefully I can get all this back in here like Monica had it. And then of course the all-important French press made by Brutrek and marketed by Lolo Overland in Troutdale, Oregon. So there it is. Just the basics. We can go anywhere and camp for as, as long as we have food and have everything we need to be comfortable. Okay. Everything is back where it should be. Another tall lid. It's an extra 16 bucks, but that's the way they sell them. There we have it. Let's load it up. Okay, and for housewares, this is the smallest box because it has the flat lid. Uh, we have some miscellaneous stuff. We'll put our bread in here, chips, things we don't want to get crushed. Right in here now is some canned goods. A towel. There's my pancake mix. And here's some sauce. And Monica's magic little bag. <laughs> uh, you plug this in and it heats things up. And we actually put an entire Costco sausage 
lasagna in here, completely frozen. It was a perfect temperature, perfect eating temperature. The uh, cheese was melted just perfectly. And uh, it's another something you might consider uh, if you're traveling and you have some uh, like frozen burritos and you want to have for lunch, throw them in there by lunchtime. They're nice and warm, ready to eat. So if you have to keep rolling, but you want to eat something up, that's a good way to go. And this goes on top. The dry food's on top. We'll put the cooking on the bottom because sometimes, sometimes we need to access that first. And these interlock stack right there. And I've got one more to fit in there. And it's the lightest box. So I put it on top because it does have a tendency sometimes these will tip around up there, especially over rough terrain. The next item in will be my recovery kit. And the tools, you keep the water on the tailgate. Uh, we learned that from our last trip. Uh, you want to be able that if you run across some place where you can actually fill this, <laughs> that it's easier to get to than having to move uh, a bunch of stuff. So we'll go ahead and put the slide in one notch and uh, finish up the loadout. Uh, next up are the chairs. The FSR chairs go here, and in theory, the refrigerator will fit in that spot. Let's see if it works. Dimensionally, it's about the same as our old fridge, but it has a little more insulation. But look at that. Now, I intended that this wheel overhang a little bit. That's going to keep it from sliding forward, which it's not going to do anyway. And uh, I'll strap the other end down. Looks like it's going to work. Okay, only a couple of items left. And so in order to more efficiently use the space I had on top of that tote, I custom made this fiber board. It's about a quarter inch thick fiber board with some of that anti-slip uh, material on it, like you might find in an RV. And I set this on top of the tote and then there's room for the grill and the fire pit. And uh, let's, I'll show you that here. So this here is our 17 inch Blackstone uh, griddle. Uh, we cook almost everything on this. I've got the onboard propane. And of course you can hook up one pound canisters to this too. And it comes in at 26 pounds. This here is our 18 inch propane Outland fire bowl. And uh, another good reason to carry around some propane. Let's see how much it weighs. I may have to do this and weigh myself. 21 and a half pounds. Okay, I'm gonna pull the slide out all the way. This board with the anti-slip sits all right on top of the tote. Fire bowl goes there. This gives me some extra length and some extra width that the slide out doesn't allow for because of the way it's built. There's the Blackstone grill, and we're all loaded up with, believe it or not, room for two kayaks. <laughs> Actually, there is one other item that I should not neglect. You should never neglect, and that is your toilet system. This is the Aussie made Thunderbox. It's the only one that I've ever really liked. It's got a nice size hole. It's a good height. It's uh, very sturdy. And uh, you can either dig a cat hole or put biodegradable bags on it. Uh, anyway, I keep that fairly accessible. There's a spot here that it fits and it helps to stabilize those boxes there. All right, now it's in. 
only two more items and that's that kitchen bag and the geyser shower. Still plenty of room for our clothes, clothing and any other incidentals, but with it set up like this, uh, we can be traveling over to Prineville, see an interesting road, make a left or a right and go off into the distance and spend a few days if we want just like it is now so that's my loadout oh i forgot the ready light it has a spot too right there and right there on top of the grill okay can't forget your solar panel which rides right here and the marchway chairs which can go just about anywhere they weigh almost nothing. So, that's it. Hope you enjoyed. And remember, get out there. <laughs> There's lots to do and lots to see. And it's not that hard. <laughs>